Once in a while, we as movie critics get it wrong. We're not perfect. We're just regular, everyday Joe Schmoes who go to see a movie like everyone else. Sometimes we're paid to go to them, not me, because I'm not special. But sometimes people are paid to go to them and they give praising reviews. Other times, just out of the goodness of their own heart, they'll put down their own cold, hard cash to represent something that's maybe not as popular or as mainstream. So when a fellow movie critic recommended I watch Cobweb, I thought, all right, I'll check it out on streaming and check it out I did. And now I don't respect that movie critic for the little respect I had for movie critics and I kind of hate him and want him canceled because the movie I watched was so miserably terrible. I can't imagine how anything he says holds any weight to it at all. Let's talk Cobweb. And yes, I'm being very dramatic here. My intro was a trap. It was meant to catch you off guard like a spider in a web, but I'm not going to keep you dangling there to keep this metaphor going. The critic in question is Cody Leach, a guy I've shared a couple conversations with. He's been on my channel. We talk privately sometimes on the artist formerly known as Twitter, the worst rebranding name ever, X, just, just terrible, but whatever, we'll move past it at this point. Cody said, Adam, you should check out Cobweb. If you're sick of all the mainstream stuff, Cobweb offers something new, brings something new to the table. So it hit Hulu, I believe that's the streaming service. It's one of the few reliable ones that doesn't shut off after 20 or so minutes of streaming. That must have been it because I could actually finish the movie. Please make sure to subscribe because the next video I talk about is gonna be a complete bitch fest about Peacock and what a total pile of crap that application is. Let's continue with Cobweb. Cobweb's rated R. It is an hour and 28 minutes long, which is music to my ears. Mm, just beautiful. I like a quick, short horror film. Doesn't overstay its welcome. Offers something new. And to be fair to Cody, and by the way, I, Cody, Cody's great. I still like the guy. I'm just joking with all the cancel stuff. Everybody, everybody has their hot takes or their opinions that don't jive with yours. That's fine. We move past it. It's not, not a big deal. He tried to do me a favor and showcase something new that's not so mainstream, and I appreciate him for that. And to be fair, this isn't a this wasn't a terrible movie by any stretch of the imagination. It's just not one that got me. Or I didn't get it the right way. Let's talk about the pros first. It looks really nice. Very good visual. Cinematography's top notch, in my opinion. Good sound design, some decent scares without having to resort to constant jump scares. There's maybe maybe one or two, but they're they're not so disingenuous, you know? It's not a cat jumping out of a closet. It's, it's truly a, a, a jump scare that means it. Um, I like the lead character. I have IMDB up because I don't remember his name. Woody Norman is the actor. He plays Peter. Uh, he's going to be living with two garbage parents, Lizzie Kaplan as Carol and Anthony Starr as Mark. Lizzie's been around for a long time. It's a little bit depressing seeing some of these actors I recall watching as a teenager and they were a teenager and now they're playing parents, which of course I'm a parent, but still, it's a little sad watching the teenage heartthrobs grow up. And I just think, oh yeah, Lizzie's, Lizzie's my age or older or younger. I don't know, either way, we're, we're, in, the same, we're in the same league and it's kind of sad. Anthony Starr, <laughs> he's, he's Homelander on The Boys and I think he's still Homelander in Cobweb. The guy is the same here. Outside of having brunette hair, his facial tics, the way he the way he talks, his cadence, it's all very much Homelander still. I don't know if the director said, hey, I want you to just play this guy without the superpowers, or if Anthony's just kind of stuck in that kind of character right now, probably in between seasons. All I know is he didn't come off as a loving father, he came off as a total ass. But as the movie progresses, we find out that's intentional. These are not good people, they're really delusional, they're insane. I'm going to keep this somewhat vague and spoiler free still, since this just did hit streaming. I know a lot of people missed it when it hit theaters, but it's not going to take long for you to come to the conclusion that, oh yeah, Peter's parents kind of suck. They're hiding something, there's secrets among amongst them. What's going on with these two? Peter, he, he's, he's just trying to get through the day. All he knows is his parents, but he's going to attend class. This is going to have a lot of cliches that I'm frankly really getting sick of. Peter's drawing cryptic things by basically ruining his pencil, 
really pushing down on that paper, getting everything nice and black and dark and, and sketchy with creepy kids looking out windows. Teacher's going to be concerned. She's going to take matters into her own hands. There's going to be... Um, <laughs> There's just so many. There's the bully. There's always the freaking bully at school that's picking on the main protagonist because, of course, our main kid can't be a Kevin McAllister type. He's got to be chips are down. I mean, even when Kevin's bullied by his own family, he's standing up for himself. He's being, he's being pretty awesome about it. But no, Peter's getting his ass kicked. At some point, he had his chin busted up and it was all red and bloody. But then in another scene, it's not red and bloody. No one ever addresses the fact that he's got these marks on his face. They kind of come and go. Felt like maybe some stuff was taken out of order or edited poorly. I'm not sure what happened. I was very confused. My wife was too. She's like, Adam, what? where did his scar go? Why is no one talking about the bruising on his face? And I just, I say, I don't know. Maybe it'll make sense later. It never makes, it never makes sense later. Cobweb as the name implies, has to do with some sort of a spider scenario going down. But what does it mean? Well, as this movie unfolds, we'll find out. It's really going to be a slow burn, though, for the first hour. And it's that last 20 minutes where things are going to go awry, where things are really going to let loose. From a bloody standpoint or a gore standpoint, there is some decent gore later on. Some decapitation, short for decapitation. Solid amount of blood here and there. The the um, villain is creepy, I guess, kind of. Also a little silly at the same time. The reason for this thing's existence is head scratching. The parents have very little backstory at all, so it's hard to even understand what is going on in this film, what character motivations they have, why they're even doing this to the poor child. It's a puzzle that maybe upon further watching could help you dissect it, but I have no interest in going back. That said, there was enough good here to at least get me to finish watching the film and take me on the journey, but when I got to the destination, I wasn't left satisfied. I, I was left pretty empty and a little puzzled and a little upset, actually a lot upset. There's mostly practical effects, I think. They're, they're convincing me if they're not. Later on, it gets Looney Tunes, there's a couple shots of this creature that are terrible. I'm talking like full-on cartoon animated shots, especially of the face. And I understand why they barely show it, because it's, it's just silly. It's very silly. That's kind of a way I could summarize this film. It's silly, but not in a good way, in a head-scratchingly odd way. There, there's a concept here that's not fully formed, and so what we're left with is a few different ideas kind of jumbled together into a bit of a potluck stew mess. End of the day, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted from Cobweb. So Cody Leach probably should cancel your channel, shut it all down, hand in your critic card, your Rotten Tomatoes certification. It's over. It's over. And we're going to bring the mob to you, son. No. Cody's great. This one just was a miss, but I appreciate a recommendation when I get it from a fellow critic. And I will always be honest about my opinions. Not horrible, but I can see why some people would think it is. <laughs> Not amazing, but I could also see why some people would think it's pretty cool. Just because it is different in a sense. It has a lot of cliches to it, but there is some new stuff brought to the table at least. Alright, those are my thoughts on Cobweb. Not a fan, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not upset that I watched it, I guess, at the end of the day. Let me know if you saw it. Put a comment below, please. Like the video if you had a good time. Please subscribe if you're new here. Would love to have you stick around, especially when I have that Peacock Bash Fest coming up. I, I would love for you to hear that. Everybody should hear that. Like the video if you want. These are also posted to the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, other podcast services. So you can join me on one of those as well. These go up at 9 a.m. whenever I can get them up. So multiple times a week, they go on the podcast. And if you really love what I'm doing, become a Patreon. Tis the season after all. There's a $1 tier. Patreon.com slash Adam Does Movies. Support movie critics that give their honest takes, even if they're garbage. As long as they're identifying pros and cons of the film and they're true to themselves, I think that's worth, especially in 2023 going on 2024, I think that's worth celebrating. I think that's worth 
championing when there is so much money now exchanging hands between studios and just content creators trying to make a name for themselves it's ugly out there and then you can't trust them it's like do they do it for this they do it for that we don't we don't know we just have to find people that we think are sincere and support them so yeah there's also a way to become a member right here on youtube via the join button you just hit that it's the same as patreon it's great there's bonus tier there's bonus things you can get from it we'll love it if you did all right thank you for watching hopefully i see you next time take care